nothing changes. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today's Thursday, January 21st, 2021. I got asked to do an updated video about Vero. That's the eBay Vero program and Vero in general. Uh, if you're a new seller, new to this channel, or new to reselling in general on any platform, uh, this is mainly about eBay, but it also covers every platform and applies to it. So what is Vero? V-E-R-O is a verified rights protection uh, verified rights and owners protection program that eBay has, but it also, again, like I said, applies to the general population and world, no matter where you sell. So what it means is that eBay has put a place, a website uh, page on their platform where owners of brands like Abercrombie, Harley and Davids, Harley Davidson, um, uh, Rosetta Stone, it could be any category, anything can go and put up their rules for their IP protection. IP is intellectual property, anything that they own, uh, like logos, slogans, brand names, trademarks, all of that is protected, and they can go on the site, put their brand in there, and add the rules that they have for you, you us as the sellers, being allowed to sell their products. So most brands allow you to sell their products because a, the first sale doctrine technically says we have the right to resell anything that we legally own. It does not, however, give us the right to use their trademark Logan, uh, slogan or uh, logo any way that we wish. So like you can't take a Harley Davidson logo and add like a graphic thing over top of it. They're gonna get really mad about that. So companies can make rules that say, you can sell our products, that's fine, but don't do X. And so the biggest one is obviously don't sell fake goods. Louis Vuitton, Rolex, Harley, they don't want you to sell fake stuff, right? Because obvious reasons. They also don't want you to sell imitation, knockoff, bootleg, inauthentic, whatever you want to call them. People trying to make it look like it, but they change it a little bit. That's not allowed either because it does something called confuse as a customer. So if we have a Louis Vuitton LV, and somebody just changed it to like LV with a little squiggle at the end, somebody else might confuse that product for Louis Vuitton. And if it's a really low quality knockoff, they're gonna get it and they're gonna go, wow, Louis Vuitton sucks at making stuff even though it wasn't Louis Vuitton. That's the reason that exists. So most of the companies that put their stuff on eBay's Vero list exist to protect them from inauthentic knockoff fake goods. That's number one. Number two is some companies stop you from selling a brand new item. Uh, they'll allow you to sell used, but not brand new. And the reason they don't want you to sell brand new is because they provide a guarantee or a warranty for that item in the event that you buy it brand new and something happens to it. A couple good examples of this are Patagonia and the North Face. They will replace just about anything because they have like a lifetime replacement guarantee. So like if the zipper on your jacket breaks, they'll take care of you. But if me or you as a seller happens to come across a brand new jacket that maybe somebody donated to Goodwill and we buy it because they just didn't want it, they got it as a gift, and we take it home and we sell it as brand new, somebody buys it from us, brand new, and their zipper breaks and they call us, well, we're not going to replace the zipper. Now, I know eBay has policies and returns and all this, but we cannot offer the same guarantee and warranty that Patagonia North Face has. Now, sometimes that customer can go to them directly and they'll take care of it, but that's where they don't want you offering that because you are not the original seller or a licensed distributor, somebody they've approved to do it. And that's why they say no brand new. If you try to sell brand new North Face or Patagonia, they will come after you. I promise you, I can show you the files from tons of sellers who get shut down and message or email me. There are other companies similar to that that don't allow you to sell their product brand new, but if you wanna sell it uh, used, they're perfectly okay with that. So some of that is in there as well. Now, when you go to the eBay Vero list, don't be afraid that just because a company is on there that you can't sell their products. They're literally just reiterating their rules like, hey, don't sell fake crap. Some companies even say, don't take a Harley Davidson jacket, cut the circle out and make a purse out of it because we don't produce purses like that 
and then the customer would have a false sense of Harley produces crap purses in the event that you made a crap purse. So there are some rules against that too, like chopping up a product and putting it in there. Every company is different and I know this is a headache and I'm probably gonna get 100 emails and comments saying, how are we supposed to know? Why doesn't eBay flag this? Well, we don't know for the same reason that eBay doesn't flag it because there's a million companies and it would be impossible for them to put every single rule. That's why they give the companies a space to put their rules. Now, with that being said, uh, I always in my Facebook groups, I'm probably not clear about it, but I think the eBay Vero list is worthless. And here's why. And sorry, eBay, feel free to message me. I don't care. Most of the companies that are on the Vero list are almost okay with everything that you do as long as you're not selling fake goods. Fake goods is obvious. Let's just take that one aside. As long as you don't screw around like that, almost every company on that list is perfectly fine with you selling their goods. There are some exceptions. There are some really bad companies on that list, which I'm going to go over in a minute. However, the companies that are notorious on eBay and other platforms, Macari, Amazon, Posh, whatever, that take down listings all the time and go after sellers don't even appear on that list. The ones I'm gonna give you in a minute, some of them appear, but a lot of them do not. So what's the point of the list if we don't even know? It's really just worthless. The best piece of information you can get about the eBay Vero list, sadly, and I'm not doing this to toot my own horn, is right here in this video because I get the messages and the emails from hundreds of you guys telling me the companies that come after you. Sometimes I see companies like one at a time and it's like, that's really random, I've never heard of that company. Or I see the same company day after day after day after day, lawyer after lawyer after lawyer, and I immediately am like, wow, that company's really a jackass, sorry YouTube. They're really coming after people, I better make note of that and tell people. So that's why I have this list and that's why it's really informative to watch this video to the end. Now, the last point before I give you the list that I wanna make about uh, the Vero, um, program and the rules and the rights and everything about it is a huge set of myths. And so we're going to get right into that. And then I'll give you guys the list, which I will, it's the list actually appears in my training program too. Anybody that's purchased my training program last year or the 2021 edition this year, which is linked below, it's come in there and you guys already know all this. So I apologize ahead of time to any of you that watch my videos or have that training program. You guys know all this. So this shouldn't be any kind of um, news to you. And uh, that's why you should invest in the training program because some of you got kicked off this year that could have avoided it. So the myth that comes up all the time is that if a company messages you on eBay or another platform or whatever, sends you digital, uh, that it's not legal and that they have to serve you or send you paper through snail mail or certified or what have you. Also, if a company messages you and they have zero feedback, they're, they're, they're spam, they're scammers. They're, that's not a real thing. That's completely false. A hundred percent false. So there are people that are competition on the e-commerce platforms. It used to be a lot more. It's kind of calmed down a little bit, but they will send you fake messages claiming to be the owner of a brand and to take your product down because they want to remove competition and they think they're really slick and sneaky. It doesn't happen quite as often as it used to. It used to be all the time we saw and people got caught doing that. It doesn't happen quite as much anymore. Most of the messages and emails that come through eBay or direct to you are legitimate. They're either from the company, they're from a representative, or they're from a law firm that works with these companies to basically peruse these sites all day to take stuff down. So if you get a message or an email, do not immediately assume that it is fake or that it is from competition. That is not the case. It very well could be from a lawyer, a legal team, and you could be opening yourself up to legal action by ignoring it or telling them to pound sand. Not a good idea. First thing you wanna do, is research the company, go to their website, Google them, see if there's anything on their legal page about who they work with, their legal team, names, try to match anything up, or contact them directly. Email them or call them and say, hey, did you contact me on eBay or on a platform about a product I was selling? Don't give them too much information, but try to confirm that it was them. If you can confirm that it was them, then you know it's legitimate. If they're like, we have no idea what you're talking about, don't automatically write it off, continue and say, hey, uh, this person is, here's what I got, do you know what this is? And then if they say no again, you know you've got a spammer. But if they're like, oh yeah, actually that's one of our legal, uh, you know, uh, junior lawyers, then paralegals, whatever, then you know that it's game on. So in the event that you figure out that the communication is legitimate, you uh, 
eBay is just a way that companies can go to you. They can take your listings down. They can suspend you. Sometimes they'll do that without even communicating with you. Sometimes they'll communicate with you first and give you a chance. That's a courtesy. They don't have to do that. They absolutely, if they are the owner, can go to eBay and take your listings down 100% without telling you, without saying anything, just boop, gone. You can get suspended. You can lose your account. You can, uh, you know, any of that stuff can happen. The other thing is, if they give you that cease and desist, tell you to take it down, ask for this, ask for that, they, again, don't have to do that. People can sue you without giving you formal notice. Uh, a cease and desist letter is just a courtesy, technically. It doesn't have to come in the mail. Most companies will send it to you certified mail or through the mail or what have you or signature required. And the way that they get your information, they can either get it from eBay if they are the company or a lot of times they'll just buy one of your products and then when it ships to them, they have your address and your information and then they just send it accordingly. Okay, now that you know that this is a courtesy, it's very vital that you go about it in the right process. One, confirming that it is actually the company. Two, if this is an item that you bought from like a thrift store or yard sale and you've got like one of them or two of them or you dumpster dove it or someone gave it to you, just tell them like, hey, look, I got one of these or two of these from the thrift store, from Goodwill, from the yard sale. If you don't want me to sell it, I've taken them down. I'll get rid of it. I'll do whatever you want me to do with it. I just don't want any more issues. Just consider it done. And some of them will be like, sweet, we're over it. Some of them will still say, hey, we want you to send any that you have left to us. We want you to pay us any profits you made. We want you to sign this, sign that. If it gets to that point, you got a real problem and you either need to involve a lawyer or because that's so expensive, you've got to, to plead with them and negotiate with them and just be like, here, I'll send you the one that I have left, the two that I have left, I don't have any money, I made like a whopping 10 bucks off of it, blah, blah, blah. Only do that if you actually are telling the truth because they could look at your eBay solds and if you've sold 50 of something, they can see it or maybe they can see it, they can subpoena records later. For all you know, they're the guy that bought 50 of them from you, right? Don't lie to them if you sold a bunch. If you have sold a bunch and you made a good amount of profit, then you've got a whole nother set of problems because you have to assume that they know that or that they have an idea of that. And if you lie to them, they're gonna push a lot harder. In that event, you would really need to negotiate a settlement with them, either through a lawyer or if you dare do it on your own, contact, there's a lot of free legal assistance and things, but if you're actually talking to the real company and you actually sold a lot of it and you actually think <laughs> that they know or that there's a chance, then you've got to work out a deal with them. Um, a lot of people are gonna respond to this video and say, uh, ignore them, tell them to screw off, tell them to come get you. It's not worth it. At the point that they actually file the lawsuit, just to respond to business lawsuits, if you guys aren't familiar with what happened to me in 2012, 2013, um, I was involved in a multi-million dollar civil lawsuit, business lawsuit over something that ended up being uh, settled out of court uh, with a company who's out of business right now, it's Sprint. It's no secret that I was in a legal battle with Sprint uh, eight years ago, nine years ago. And um, it turns out that later, a year or two later, a company they sued for the exact same thing that they sued me for um, actually beat them in court because it was ruled that what they were suing for was absolutely uh, against the law. And so that was like a huge deal. And if I had had the money to fight them, I could have, but... That lawsuit cost that other company $175,000. I spent almost 70, I think it was $67,000 in 13 months just to settle and just to make it go away so that we both just walked away and no one won or lost. You may see stories about me on the internet that I owe Sprint $5 million and this and that. I assure you, I don't owe anyone $5 million. I never did. That's just Google being Google. And if I owed them $5 million, would I be driving the cars that I have? Would I have the credit score that I have? Would I have the money? That I make? Would I, would I be buying the house that I'm buying? Use common sense, guys. Look, if you have that kind of judgment against you, they garnish your money, they garnish your wages, they kill your credit, they destroy your life. Nobody can have a $5 million judgment. Not to mention, they sued Worldwide Sales LLC. Bankruptcy? My company's not bankrupt. Look it up on Google. Look it up on uh, Florida Division of Corporations. My business is just fine. So um, that's just one thing to remember. I've been down this road and the last thing you wanna do is get involved in a civil court battle with any company because it's gonna cost you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Do whatever you have to do to make it go away. Okay, so now on to the products, the most important part, right? What are the brands and products you should avoid at all cost? So some people are gonna say that they disagree with this, but 
unless you have permission from them or your distributor or licensed seller, stay away from these companies if at all possible. Even used, new, otherwise, I will tell you. Already mentioned North Face and Patagonia. Used, absolutely fine. Brand new, don't chance it. I have seen dozens and dozens of messages from both companies. Uh, so that's clothing brand, uh, Patagonia North Face. If you're not familiar with them, make yourself familiar with them because they sell really good on the used market. Um, I sell a bunch of it on the used market. Number two, uh, Rosetta Stone, or number three, Rosetta Stone. They are a language learning software. They sell CDs, DVDs, discs that were really popular over the last decade or so. Uh, you buy it, they sell it in Spanish, German, Russian, all kinds of different languages. They will take you down immediately, karate chop you as soon as they see it. I know a lot of people are also gonna say, I forgot this point, uh, that they see all this stuff listed on eBay or whatever, or sold or active. Yes, some of it is licensed distributors, wholesalers. It's the company themselves through shell companies. Don't pay attention to what is active or sold. Just because it's up there doesn't mean you're allowed. Uh, it means it's either them or someone they've given approval to or someone they just haven't got around to taking down yet, but they will because not enough manpower, of course. So Rosetta Stone, number three. Number four is P90X or Beachbody. I think one of the companies is owned by the other. Beachbody owns P90X or vice versa or whatever it is. You guys know what it is. Workout videos, uh, you know, get shredded abs, all that stuff. Uh, they will take you down, new or used or otherwise, karate chop. So P90X, Beachbody. Uh, also, I've heard quite a few complaints about Billy Blanks. Uh, what is that, the Tybo series? That's from like, what, 1995, 2000? Uh, I've heard many complaints about Tybo, uh, Tybo and Billy Blanks. So I don't have any personal experience with that. Be careful uh, with that one as well. I can't confirm or deny it, but I'm going to go with probably the same story. Wallet Ninja, uh, not familiar with it, Google it. It's a little tool, it's like a 12-in-1 tool. It's like the shape and size of a credit card, except it's harder, it's metal, it has like a little cutter, a, a corkscrew, all this little stuff. For some reason, they're really bad about you selling their products, especially brand new. I don't think I've seen any used ones, but uh, they're not worth a lot of money, 15, 20 bucks, I don't know, but they're just one of those random ones. Blue Parrot uh, wireless headphones, headphones in general, we had a ton of problems with those years ago. It's been a while but they gave a ton of problems. Blue Parrot headphones, they used to hit us up all the time. Um, so that is a really, really big one to avoid. Uh, also, like I said, anything um, that is not uh, uh, authentic is not real. If it's inauthentic, fake, knockoff, bootleg, yeah, I'm talking to you, vintage sellers. If it wasn't made by the company or authorized by the company, I don't care what you call it, it's not allowed. So any company for that matter. Uh, Chanel is one that you should be really, really cautious of. Chanel clothing seems to be okay. They have a real problem with people selling their uh, perfumes and colognes. A guy was sued for like $56 million last year or two years ago for selling their demo bottles or tester bottles because it didn't come in the original packaging and it was basically them saying he wasn't able to sell the same thing that they were along the lines of that warranty guarantee. It's something called materialistically different. So if you don't include the exact packaging and baggage and all that, they can get you for that, which is really crazy, right? So um, Chanel fragrances, I'd be really, really cautious of, especially brand new used or half bottles. Maybe okay. Again, I don't sell that stuff, so maybe somebody can chime in on that one because I don't think they'd have a problem. You know, you might have an $80 bottle of Chanel and you've used a tiny bit out of it and you hate it, so you put it up as used, like, hey, I only use a tiny bit, I'll sell the bottle for $30, somebody wants it. Chanel might be okay with that. Uh, I can't guarantee that, I'm not a lawyer, so uh, tread lightly with Chanel and their fragrances, definitely, perfumes and colognes. Okay, next is Otterbox. They make uh, cell phone cases. This is not one, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Otterbox is a company that offers that guarantee on their brand new product, so they don't want you selling Otterbox as brand new because you cannot offer that warranty. Um, that goes for life-proof cases as well. In fact, just as recently as about a week or a week and a half ago, somebody was in touch with me that life-proof was hounding them over a lawsuit. So. Uh, avoid those two companies brand new. Used, uh, they're probably not worth a ton of money to resell used. If you feel like it, fine, I think they're okay. I've sold some used daughter boxes a long, long time ago, but uh, tread carefully. Also, the two words that you can't use, Velcro. Velcro is actually a trademarked um, 
invention created by a company, Velcro Inc., and they actually have a parody YouTube video. It's kind of funny, actually, but uh, made by their lawyers that protect their name. And the reason is, is because if you buy a legitimate pair of shoes with a legitimate Velcro on it, and they work, great. But if you buy a Velcro pair of shoes that isn't actually made by Velcro, it's made by a knockoff connecting piece of material and it fails, Velcro looks bad, right? Same reason, they're protecting their name. Well, if you're going to use the word Velcro in a listing, you don't use it, you use, uh, there's a couple different things. People use like hook and loop or latch or anything but the word Velcro. Everybody comments on this all the time. Uh, and the weird thing is, even if you do have a legitimate product with legitimate Velcro and you use the Velcro word, they still hit you. It's really weird, it's like they don't even look into whether that product actually contains real Velcro or not, they just take it down. It's crazy, I don't understand it, because I've seen people with real products that were taken down that I looked up and it was actually made by Velcro, or the product piece was made by Velcro. I'm like, guys, come on. Like, their lawyers are just overtime on that. It's, it's overkill. Uh, the other word you can't use is onesie. Uh, a onesie, a one-piece outfit. Uh, your baby wears them. Uh, some adults wear them. You can't use the word onesie. It's owned by Gerber, actually. Gerber owns the word onesie. Of course, they make baby food, baby clothing. They make all kinds of baby products. And uh, they own that word. So if you're going to sell any non-Gerber product that's a onesie, you use the word one-piece outfit, uh, one suit. You use something not onesie. Uh, if you're selling a Gerber actual onesie, um, you're supposed to be able to list it as onesie, but again, they're like Velcro. I've seen them take down actual Gerber onesie. Somebody tested it. They listed a Gerber onesie as a onesie and it was taken down like two days later. So be very, very careful and uh, just don't use the word onesie or the word Velcro. You'll be all set. So Otterbox Life Proof, uh, North Face, Patagonia, P90X, Beachbody, Tybo, Blue Parrot, Wallet Ninja, Rosetta Stone, onesie and Velcro. I think that covers the big ones that I know of. Some other people have said they had problems with like a lot of the MLM companies, uh, Jamberry and uh, I don't even know, the supplements, anything that's like an MLM or a pyramid scheme company, probably good to avoid. If you were signed up with them as a distributor, I'm pretty sure you signed something that said you couldn't sell it like that anyways. But if you just got it from your friend who sold off her inventory, I'm not talking about LuLaRoe, obviously, they're not uh, a problem, but not generally. But uh, any of those like supplements or creams or nail companies or like, I've heard the Origami Owl, that was like the necklace with the charms inside of it or whatever. Um, I've heard those companies, if they see anyone listing their stuff, they get really upset because they only want it listed through their parties and their website and stuff. So. Just a word of warning for everyone that these are the companies, this is how they operate, this is the rules, this is the way it works, and there will be a lot of people in the comments who are going to disagree with me on a lot of points, and I'm totally cool with that because I know that a lot of them don't have the experience that I have, A, in the lawsuit, B, with thousands of you guys who have gone through this, who have posted items, been taken down, been sued, been cease and desisted. I have seen it any time it happens, People come to me. They come to me. My email box and inbox and shared files are full of these correspondences. I can tell you, sadly, it's the way it works. And to finalize this video, why doesn't eBay do anything to help us? The manpower and everything that it would take for eBay to list and go over this, and it's just too much for eBay. It's not their business. Uh, they don't care if you get sued. Sorry, eBay. It's the truth. Their job is simply if a company contacts them to take you down and either remove your listings or worse, suspend you for some amount of time or permanently if it gets to that uh, point. So it's not up to eBay to legally protect you, it's up to you. Hopefully this helps a lot of people, it clears up a lot of myths and it makes everything easy for 2021. How do we know what other products besides my list there are that you'll get hit for? Sadly, we don't know. We don't. Uh, do your best, sell everything that you know is authentic and hope for the best and pray. Thank you as always, guys, I appreciate it. If you need any kind of resources, help with your inventory or accounting, help with your taxes, help with reselling and social media in general, all of my links and resources are down below that will help you out with all of that. So click the description box, click see more if you can't see it, and investigate all of those down below anytime. I appreciate all of you, thank you so much. Give the video a thumbs up, make sure you do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone next time. Oh, and don't forget guys, before I do roll out of here, a little quick one. Down below is the link to my live show tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll see everyone there.